Hey guys, part four of our Excel for Data Science series is going to cover single sample t-tests. Coming up next is going to be independent, dependent t-tests, and we'll just keep going through different basic analyses that you might see in a statistics class. Okay. So what I've done is uh, going back to our tidy data principle, we have some sort of variable here that we've entered where each person gets their own row. It's about 23 people here. And what I've, uh, fake data I've made up is um, needs parking garage. So one thing we always have trouble with at my university is that we've uh, expanded and we're quite large and we just don't have enough parking on campus. So students are very opinionated about parking garages. So let's pretend like that we've sampled a series of students coming out of the parking lot and asking them like, do we need a parking garage? One to seven. <laughs> And so I probably made these numbers a little too low, but we're going to compare that score to, uh, let's say, an average score of four. So do students think we need a parking garage more than neutral? Okay. Now, when, the way the single sample t-tests work is that they compare one sample of, of people, numbers, some, some sample of numbers to a population mean. And that population mean is often called mu in math circles, um, which looks like a little U symbol. But really, if you think about it, it's like some sort of criterion comparison. So let's say we want to compare this to average, so we're going to compare it to four. So on a one to seven scale, do our students think that we need a parking garage more than neutral, and four is neutral. Okay. We could pick any number here, or you could have some sort of real population score. So this is really the score you want to compare against. Okay, so you're going to make this number up. This is not a number that you calculate. To get the sample size, we could literally look and go, oh, it looks like 23. However, we're going to do this using Excel. So we're going to count the number of cells with um, data points here. So we're going to use the count function. Okay. We're just going to highlight all those cells we're interested in. Okay. I'm not going to highlight the entire column because that will count the variable label, and I don't want to do that. And so that'll tell me that there are 23 people. And so a quick and dirty way to do these kinds of highlights, if you are a keyboard person, is click on the first one, hold down Shift, Control on a Windows machine, Command on a Mac, and down, and that will take you to the bottom. So that's a faster way to highlight if you have lots and lots of data. Now that'll take you to the next missing data point. And so you'll, here you'll have to kind of deal with missing data um, because count, I believe, will include any cell. Okay. Now I want to do the same thing for mean. I want to calculate my average score. So we're just kind of calculating our descriptive statistics right now. So n is 23. For average, I'm going to use the average function. So I've labeled the functions out here in column F. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to highlight, shift, control, or command down, close parentheses. Ooh, our average score is a 4.09. Uh, so we're looking at probably not going to be different from 4. But let's see. To get standard deviation, we would do equals stdev. There's also .s and .p, but the main stdev gives you these sample statistics. So that one's good enough for me. Click on the first one. Again, shift, command, control, down. Close parentheses. We've got our standard deviation. <clears throat> now the formula here is actually, oops, I don't want to do equals, standard deviation divided by the square root. So we're going to do equals. We're going to click on that standard deviation. So we're working with references here. Divided by SQRT, ooh, SQRT, of the sample size. So it's the square root of n. this here. And so this uh, function allows us to use those references. So let's say I went back in, I was like, oh man, I misrecorded all of these. I forgot to reverse code this. Some of these are actually much higher than they should have been. This is going to auto adjust. Okay. The only thing that's not really going to auto adjust because we have the variable name in here is if we add more participants, we will want to go back and increase that column, that uh, space here for these first three to include those new participants. Okay, but the referencing here would still work. 
Um, we'll just leave our, our numbers at 4.47 so you can kind of make up your own data here to play with. Our population mean is not a calculated number. It's just given. <clears throat> here alpha is what p-value we maybe want to use. And so maybe I'm going to compare my p-value to 0.05. And this is more of a just a reminder to yourself of what alpha you've picked. So um, you will want to pick your alpha here. This is your criterion score if using traditional statist uh, statistical like significance rules. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So degrees of freedom are the number of values allowed to change and keep the same mathematical structure, basically. Um, and so that's like a very confusing thing, especially to a lot of my statistics students. So what I always teach them is that it's you probably got at least one number wrong. So it's, it's really um, the sample size minus the number of uh, numbers you're estimating, and we've estimated the mean. Okay. So we're going to say equals our n value here, minus 1. Our t statistic here, so I'm going to use uh, parentheses, otherwise Excel will try to do um, um, the math rules for us. So it's the mean from the sample minus the population mean, whatever you've picked, divided by the standard error. So having all of those entered now, I don't have to retype them, and now the Excel sheet is dynamic. So one thing we're trying to really do here is make your functions more a little more fluid. The only thing that really we don't have a, a good point for right now is if we add more data. Okay. So our t value is 1.79 moment because our standard deviation and our standard error is kind of small. To get that as a p-value, we do equal t.dist.2t. Okay, you can do lowercase. Um, Excel will figure it out. Open parentheses, and now it's going to help us out. We want x. x here is going to be t, comma, degrees of freedom. Close that bad boy. Hit OK. And then we see our p-value is 0.05. Okay. And if you want to get really fancy, you can do a significance test. <clears throat> so we can do an if function. So if uh, p-value less than alpha, say yes for significance. Otherwise, say no. So that's e11 divided by or less than e8. Then for an if function, you do the first option is if it's true. The second option is if it's false. Uh, if you want to learn more about if, remember, you can hit the FX button here, and it will show you the order. So value if true, value if false. Okay. And at the moment, that's no. So let's say we wanted to add more data. The only thing we really need to do is I have pulled some more students, especially during finals and the first week of class. Okay, you'll see that none of these numbers updated, but Excel is pretty helpful here. It showed me like, hmm, maybe you've left something out. It's a little triangle here. Uh, formula admits adjacent, adjacent cells. Sometimes you want this, sometimes you don't. But I do on this case, so I can update that formula. And I could update that formula twice more. So that would help me um, realize that I'm missing the new data that I've entered. So I could reprogram those and highlight the cells again, or Excel is like, hey, let me help you out. By adding those new participants, I can see that I have now flipped to uh, significant. Now I'm not advocating for cheating. <laughs> uh, most, like I'm in psychology, we would consider this p-hacking, which where we've added more participants till it became significant. I just wanna also show you kind of how Excel will help you out with your formulas. Um, so where I wouldn't advocate peaking, looking at the results and then adding more people until it worked. Um, let's say if you wanted to do a one-tailed t-test, meaning only above or only below, you would divide this p-value by 2 to find that level. Um, there's also a function t.dist.r, as in Romeo t, and that gives you the right-hand tail, so only the above um, tail. And so I find it always easy to do two-tail tests because if I want to do a one-tail test, I just divide that p-value by two to get the appropriate p for a one-tail test. Okay, most of us also consider one-tail tests cheating um, unless you've justified your hypothesis, uh, but that's how you'd get the number. 
So that's how we do this all by hand because it's not part of the data analysis package. However, I'm gonna show you a quick cheat on how you can actually do this with the data analysis package. It's um, mildly, uh, it's mathematically correct, but it does not look right. <laughs> So what we're going to do is make some fake variable. Okay. On that fake variable, you're going to make every person a zero. Okay. Specifically zero. So I'm going to click zero here. I'm going to click and wait till this changes to the little black arrow and double click so that I have two columns of data. One about my actual data set, which is about do we need a parking garage or not? And two, which is a fake variable. And I've labeled this as fake so I remember that it's fake. Now let's click data, data analysis. Be sure you have this uh, toolkit installed. And we're actually gonna do this as a paired two sample for means test. Okay, this is cheating because it's technically a dependent T test, but mathematically dependent T and single sample T are the same after you subtract the two pairs from each other. We'll cover dependent T next week so you can learn about this a little more, but this is a way to get Excel to do the math for you. Um, so mathematically it's the same, but it looks funny because you're running it against um, a fake variable. So I'm going to click OK. This t-test one is at the very bottom, by the way. Click OK. I'm going to highlight A. So you can tell I tested this beforehand. So I'm going to highlight A for my first one. For the second column, second data set, if it were blank, I could highlight the entire column. My hypothesized mean difference is 4 in our example. I do have the labels in the first column, so be sure I put labels in here. Alpha, I'm going to set as 0.05, but let's say I decided today I wanted to go 0.01. Just decide to change it, and we'll put this in a new worksheet. Then we wait on Excel to do its thing, and then we go, oh my gosh, I cannot possibly read that. Let's make this bigger. Okay. Whoa. Not 200 points, but there. Okay, so what happens is this runs a dependent t test against a zero. Now it doesn't really totally like this so much because um, the variance of the second one is zero, but that's okay because what happens is it first subtracts column one minus column two to do all this down here. So there's my mean, my my variance. Be sure you note that this is variance and not standard deviation. So if I go back to sheet one, we calculated standard deviation, not variance, but the mean's the same. Okay. Tells me my observations, so I have 32, which is the same as my count over here. Okay. Here's the, the good part. Degrees of freedom, T stat, are our T and DF numbers. So you'll see that that matches what we calculated over here, because the math's pretty simple. Okay. It also gave us the critical T values for those and our p-values for one-tailed and two-tailed tests. So 0 0.002, that matches over here, 0 0.002. And now you can prove that a one-tailed test is just literally the two-tailed test divided by two. Okay. So that's the cheat way. It's a little faster than typing it all in by hand, but if you're trying to learn formulas in Excel, this is a good practice for just learning how to manipulate uh, cells and formulas. Um, but if you need a quick and dirty t-test, this is how you can make that happen using the data analysis pack. So that's how you calculate simple single sample t-tests using Excel. Next week we're going to cover dependent t-tests. You can learn a little bit more about how the proper use of the data analysis pack. And we're just going to keep going with different ideas on statistics in Excel.